I'm JD the Media Jack, and this is another episode of the Flipside Podcast, episode 453. Today, we're going to be talking to two TikTok content creators, Chris Wells and Mike Hyde. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for joining me here, and thank you for subscribing. If you're listening to this on a podcast, thank you yet again. Again, this is a podcast that's available all over the internet where fine podcasts can be downloaded. Just search for the Media Jack. So we're gonna hear from Chris Wells in just a little bit, a content creator, TikToker out of Alabama who is delightful, humorous, funny, as well as he is a fitness enthusiast and a competitive weightlifter. He loves to bring a little bit of sense of humor to the world of the American politics, which is strife with misinformation right now. But first we're gonna hear from Mike Hyde, a TikTok content creator out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, or just outside of Edmonton. When did you initially start up on TikTok? So when did I like download the app or when did I start like creating content? Actually both. Cause I know, okay. I know for some people it's not like a bam, I'm into it. Some people it's like, well, I downloaded it and then well, I might try it. <laughs> that's pretty much how it went. I mean, like it, it's kind of a long story in the sense that like I was in a very rough point in my life. I just got fired from a job. Uh, that I had for a long time and I was quite successful at and my whole life just kind of got turned upside down on me and I hadn't I didn't know what direction I was heading in and then all of a sudden I'm like well I see all these TikTok videos I need something to distract myself with so I downloaded the app and I was hooked you know it's uh it really kind of brought a smile back to my face and made life not suck so much so uh <laughs> after a few months just kind of you know watching following and stuff like that i was like yeah give it a shot right so uh, it was about february when i downloaded the app and i think late april when i started creating content okay a couple of months yeah you you were in the unfortunate situation of uh being between jobs during that time does this have anything to do with uh the pandemic that we're all suffering through right now no, that was a completely unrelated issue. I uh, stepped out of line and I got called on it and uh, unfortunately I had to part ways. So, Been there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> been there. Yeah. 100% been there. Don't regret it. Ultimately, yeah. like, I still sleep at night. So, fair enough. Well, I mean, like, I believe everything kind of happens for a reason and I think that all needed to happen to get to where we're at now. I'm a firm believer in that, so I'm just going to go with it. I can't go back and change the past. I can only yeah. move forward, right? So. Yeah. No, exactly, yes. exactly. Downloaded in February, started in April. What were you hoping to get out of uh, when you initially started making content? Confidence, I guess. Because, yeah, like I, I'm not exactly what you call a confident guy. I'm not exactly with the ladies kind of thing, right? I followed a few content creators that really inspired me and, and kind of helped um, – helped me gain my confidence. First and foremost was Shemaine, Shemaine 30 or 32, if you follow her back up. Um, she's a, was a single mother of three. And, you know, she's been through a lot of hardships in her life. And she really just showed me how to persevere and overcome all that. And then there's a uh, blue light darkness who really helped me kind of step out. She was the first person I made a TikTok with. And she's really helped me up my game ever since that. Do you communicate with these two people that inspired you? Yeah, actually, uh, a lot. <laughs> I I did start off talking to Blue Light Darkness first. She was uh, the more approachable one at the time. Uh, and her and I are still friends, uh, really good friends. And Shemaine and I finally started talking in the last few months. And she actually did an account takeover for me which that I was like beside myself when that happened because I never would have dreamt that I would have gotten to that point with her that, you know, we would become friends and she was doing this account takeover. And then like we, it's kind of those things where like, you don't want to meet your heroes, but in this case, like that actually happened. And to find out that I've had an impact on her life as well as her impact on my life was just incredible. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with meeting your heroes as long as your heroes are not um, <laughs> well all up here. Sometimes they disappoint you and turn out to be like people you don't want to be around. But <laughs> like the people I've met on TikTok are, are far from that. Like yeah, I've just basically created a whole new family on here. So as it stands right now, this is uh, November the 14th. You have just over 500 followers on TikTok. 
Uh, I think I'm under. I think I'm at like 424, okay. 423. Well, okay. So yeah. you're reaching. You're reaching up there. Uh, I'm, I'm getting there. You're yeah. getting there. And you know, I again, like the, one of the reasons why that I wanted to talk to you today is because, like, I love what you do. I love the pre- presence that you have, the creativity, really and that. also your lip syncing skills. Oh, <laughs> they're beautiful. Like, quite frankly, I, I I told you beforehand. Like, I wish I had that type of skill and that type of timing. I just don't. I just you'll get there. You'll get there. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. Practice. Man. Okay. Fair you know enough. how many outtakes I have? It's not like it's not always a one hitter quitter. It's it takes a while for me to get it like just on point. So, maybe but I, just, I appreciate that. Thank you. Maybe I just need more patience. Um, yeah. but, um, so you're, you're starting to get up there. You, okay. So you have well over 400 followers on TikTok. Uh, when did that number start to just blow your mind? It started like really quick in the first two months and then it slowed down after that. And there's always that question like, what am I doing wrong or what could I be doing better to get more followers? And I just had to kind of like shut those things off because to be perfectly honest, I don't really care about getting followers. It's not that I don't care about my followers. That's not what I'm saying at all. I just, I do what I do to make people smile and laugh. So if I can make one person do that, mission accomplished. Because that's basically what this app gave me and that's what I want to give to other people. So if I can make people, make pe- one person's day a little bit brighter, a little happier, then I've done my job. That is essentially the best way, in my opinion, to make content. You're making content for yourself. You're making contact for that genuine reaction, not to make an explosion and to gain traction, but you're just doing it to make yourself smile and something to be proud of. And if you continue on with that path, generally nine times out of ten, you'll find that you have a following eventually, but it's a genuine following that will grow. It doesn't just explode and get out of control, and then all of a sudden it falls off. You have something solid, like a great platform to build up from. Yeah, a lot of people talk about, like, algorithms or uh, a right way and wrong way to do things or getting shadow banned and, like, I don't know if I've been like shadow banned per se, because I honestly don't even really know or understand what that is. I know a lot of my videos uh, maybe have just under 200 views, and then some videos may have like 20, right? So maybe some of them just slipped through the cracks. I don't know. Mm. But I have had blind reacts, and there's actually a funny story about that, because I had a blind react from someone where they sent me an audio, and I blind reacted the wrong video. So... Basically, what happened was it was supposed to be a video where it's like you don't know your true value. And what it ended up being is a guy who died cave diving in some, they call it like the Nutty Putty Cave or something like that. And that video just exploded. And I started getting all these followers and all these likes off a guy who lost his life. And I just felt terrible. It actually really kind of shook me a little bit. Like, that's not how I want to get ahead. So that was kind of my experience where I really like kind of took off but again that's not how I wanted it to happen right how does your day progress if you're going to make content on TikTok what's the the start and end of making I'm, I'm, I'm I don't know how many videos you make a day but what's the start and end of your day when you want to make something on TikTok it's it's really hard because like a you got to find like content that you want to make like audios whatever and you need that inspiration to do it plus you have to find the time you know having a full-time job that can really get in the way of that so basically my time for creating is limited to weekends or very late evenings sometimes i've been up to like one two in the morning creating content just so i can get some out there Hmm. but yeah i don't really I don't look at it like a job, right? It's more like a hobby for me. Uh, I don't really do it full time. So basically when I can create, I'll create. And until then, you know, it's got to wait, right? (laughs) This is true. Very true. (laughs) I mean, priorities are priorities. You got to make sure you have a roof over your head before you can actually play inside. Well, it's like, I just don't want to like kind of half-ass it, I guess. I don't want to just put something out there for the sake of putting it out there. Everything I do kind of like comes from the heart or something that really like hits me or I think it's going to make people laugh or something that I want to do Mm. right I don't go for trends I don't try to like you know I don't do the ask for follower kind of thing right that's really not my thing Mm. so you you had the one blind react which uh was a surprise (laughs) to you and in a massive reaction with the the audience but have you ever been uh, affected you know 
positively, emotionally, anything as such by someone who responds or follows any of your videos? Like someone touch your heart or someone? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I guess like probably back to Shemaine again. Like when I, I finally kind of got to the point where she followed me back and she kind of told me that like, you know, I like inspired her. That was um, a huge, huge reaction for me to, to finally get that. I mean, I don't know how much my con content really helps people. But just the fact that you can like make one person's life a little bit better, that just means everything to me. Hmm. So, how do you go through the audio clips that are available? I don't do a lot of my own original stuff. Like a lot of my stuff is really isn't my voice. Right, it's all lip syncing. I want to start doing my own stuff, but basically, yeah, I just watch what some of the people that I follow have and just go on the for you page and something strikes me or if i can like think of an audio it's like hey i really want to do that like something i've seen on tv or whatever then yeah i'll try to create that I, I like i said i don't really like go for the trends or um you know try to be something i'm not really mm. i do what kind of like is more of a reflection of who i am gotcha. or what my style of humor is yeah. so that's right i called myself the duet king because i like doing more duets with people than i like doing my own solo stuff <laughs> Who you are is actually quite interesting. Something that uh, you confided in me a little earlier, and also it is in your TikTok content, is you are lethal with an axe. That That is up for debate, but yes, I can be. Yeah, up for debate? <laughs> Please explain. <laughs> well, I don't want to incriminate myself. I haven't, like, you know. <laughs> okay, no, you're, you're, you're accurate with an axe. Yes. Yes. This is from what? I took a buddy of mine for a surprise birthday. We had to basically like kidnap him, get him out of the house so they can set up. And I'm like, well, what can we do? And then axe throwing is the latest and greatest thing in Empton. So I took him out for that, and I was just a natural at it. And the guys there said, like, yeah, you should come work here. So I did. <laughs> and that's how I met Dark Toast. That's awesome. That's the best yeah. way to get a job. It's like, you're good yeah, at this. Exactly. Come work for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, if you have a natural talent at something, right? I mean, it's, you know, you're kind of doing yourself a disservice not to explore it. So Very true. With uh, everything that's gone on this year, I'm assuming you're what, early 30s? 35. Okay, mid-30s. Fair enough. Yeah. I, I tend to shoot low. Um... All good. <laughs> I go the other way and it bites me in the ass every time. So it's all good. <laughs> Just for the record, everyone gets my age wrong all the time. I, I don't remember being in a world uh, or a time where everyone across a nation, you're Canadian, like myself, mm -hmm. where we have been told to social distance and quarantine and stay at home and whatnot. Um, I know that I live in a moderately small town and you live in a moderately small town as well, just outside a major city of Edmonton. What was it like when everything came down about March, April, when it comes to COVID-19 for you? Uh, there's, there's a lot of fear, right? The, the, basically, the uncertainty, the unknowing is what it really came down to. From a more comedic standpoint, there was a meme that just nailed it perfectly for me. It's like, just when I'm ready to get back in the dating world, they come up with a virus where you can't touch people or be near people. And that, for me, <laughs> was just like... Yeah, pretty much. Like, <laughs> there goes my hope of a love life, but I didn't really have one to begin with. Jesus. So, yeah, it was just, it was, it kind of sucked because, I mean, you have a lot of like friends and loved ones that you can't be around. And yeah, like dating now when you're a single guy really sucks and you can't really, you know, make a good impression when, you know, you got to stand six feet apart, right? This is true. So, this is true. And there's also the unfortunate situation of, of meeting someone solely off of the internet because you know <laughs> internet dating is such a cluster you yes. you you basically are stuck there uh in a situation where you feel as though the handcuffs are off and you don't have to worry about a thing you can say anything you want but you lose the intimacy and i don't mean of the physical sense but you lose the intimacy of meeting someone in person and actually getting to know them there is the big uh unfortunate freedom I'll, I'll call it that of um if you meet someone online uh the flirting starts immediately and it gets way out of control and then you yeah. lose 
any sort of opportunity to actually get to know someone because it's how they are in person and how you are in person and how you feed off yeah. of each other that really makes something. Well, a lot of people just hide who they are too. Like, I mean, I've been down that road a few times recently, as a matter of fact, where you meet someone and like you think things are going really well and you think there's a real connection and then it turns out they're not even the person you thought they were. So been there. Just, and, yeah. <laughs> I was married. Yeah, but, <laughs> there you go. I haven't gotten that far yet, but uh, don't I don't do know it. if I consider myself lucky or not for that. But I, I do like we kind of talking about before. Like I believe everything kind of happens for a reason. I think that you know there is a path to get me to where I am now. So finding TikTok and finding all these amazing people like yourself, like Shemaine, like Blue Eye Darkness, that really uh, opened a door to me to a whole world of amazing new people that you know have really been a huge blessing to my life. So, I mean, I don't want to say I'm thankful for COVID, but I mean, I tend to look at the glass half full and this was definitely not the worst year ever for that. So meeting a whole bunch of new people, getting a whole new bunch of friends and family, not a bad thing. Before I forget, I want to talk about blue-eyed <clears throat> darkness and that, how should I put it? Universe. Um, <laughs> blue-eyed darkness, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think I have the right person in mind. She does this phenomenal voice acting ability as well. She gets straight into the makeup. She's with uh, Dark Corruption in yep. that world. They, okay, so I do have the right person. Okay, yes. how far would you be willing to go into the cosplay makeup world? Because they get right into it. Yeah, I. that's some, not something I typically do. I recently tried face paint. I said tried. I did not perfect it yet. Uh, and that's the thing, I'm a perfectionist, so if I can't do something well, then I'll either keep trying at it or I'll just forget about it entirely because I don't want to just, again, like half-ass something or or not give it my best. But that is something that I'm looking at. It's like I've got face paint. I've been working on it. The first attempt went okay. I did kind of like a half and a half with like a regular face and the skull. Then I tried going like full skull. Didn't turn out too well, but <laughs> try, try again. Exactly. So, as you said, as you said earlier, practice makes perfect. Yeah. I've actually got something coming for that that I think is going to help. So we'll see how it goes. Oh, cool. So keep, yeah. keep tuned to uh, your TikTok. Oh, I've always got new things coming down the pipe. So, <laughs> uh, what do you hope for in the future? And also, um, I hadn't forgotten. I also know that you're not just restricted to TikTok, but what do you hope for in the future? TikTok wise, as well as the other platforms that you are present? Well, another hidden talent of mine is I actually do like um, kind of creative design. Like I make merch. I don't know if you've seen like the Mike Mania shirts or some of my other stuff, but yeah, I actually am working with another creator uh, to make merch for them. Uh, I don't really feel comfortable saying who just yet because actually, no, I can't. It's Blue Eye Darkness. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, she's already said, like, I've, I've helped her with some other merch and she's got some other stuff coming out soon uh, that we're working on. So, and then I've actually started working on some of my own stuff. Mm. Like, I've had people come up to me and say, like, yeah, I want to buy a Mike Mania t shirt. And I just kind of look at them like, why? <laughs> <laughs> Plus, there's like trademark. I don't want to get sued because it's kind of like a Hulk Hogan thing. But I mean, whatever. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that's why I want to start kind of making my own stuff and, uh, you know, just have fun with it. And it's kind of another hidden passion of mine that I, I like doing. So mm. you also, um, you're an avid gamer. Oh, yes. <laughs> Do you have Twitch, YouTube? Uh, I don't get on the Twitch much. <laughs> okay. That's why I call it the Twitch. I have friends that are on Twitch. Uh, I just haven't really explored that avenue yet. Maybe in the future. Who knows? I just don't really have a great setup for that right now. Gotcha. I just do it for fun with the buddies. We kick it. If you want to follow a good Twitch guy, Dark Toast is usually who I play with. So you want to see me on there? That's the guy to follow for that. I actually designed his logo too, just so you know. Oh, shit. Cool. Yeah. Very, you are talented. I do some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so humble as well. Um, I where Where do you hope to see uh, your TikTok presence uh, lead you? into let's say you know the end of this time next year you know i was thinking about that actually i don't really have a lot of high hopes or aspirations for that because like i said like before like and, and it's not that i don't appreciate the followers that i have i wholeheartedly do i love and respect each one of them but i'm not 
in it for the followers. I, I look at people like Blue Eye Darkness, who now has 500,000 followers, and I'm still approaching 500. Mm. The mass amount of effect that, that can have on a person's life is really not something that I'm aspiring for. <laughs> right. Because it's a lot of, well, yeah, you get a lot of people that are kind of buying for your attention. And, you know, like I said, you always don't want to meet your heroes because sometimes they disappoint you. And some people feel they're disappointed because that one person is now being called upon by how many thousands of people. So for me, I, like I said, I'm, my mission is, is what it is and it's going to stay what it is to just make people smile and laugh. If it takes off, it takes off. If not, I like meat, small potatoes. So I'm just going to be me. Plenty of irons in the fire. You're not just relying exactly. on one thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like I said, it's, it's hard to predict. I mean, I'm not going to give up on it. Like it's a creative outlet. It's really helped me kind of explore more of myself and I hope that's what it's done for others. And if I can continue to inspire people to do the same, that's what I'm going to do. If it gets me followers, great. If not, not too worried about it. It's a great lead into my next question. What advice would you give to someone who wanted to start a TikTok profile? I would just say, don't let the fear stand in the way. I mean, there's always going to be people out there that are going to judge you or or try to bring you down, but you know what? It's not about them, it's about you, okay? And there's always gonna be a lot of people like me who believe in you, you just gotta believe in yourself. Right. And that's how I got started in it. And that's what I learned from Shemaine and Blue Eye Darkness and everyone else who's kinda offered me their advice. Just believe in yourself and do what you do. Perfect. Where can people find you on social media? <laughs> so I have Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, and that's about it. And your handle there is? Uh, it's still MC Mikey. I have it the same on TikTok and Instagram. Facebook's more of my private for my own personal friends and family, so. Gotcha. If we get that far, you'll get my Facebook, too. Yeah. <laughs> so what I wanted to get into was your presence on TikTok, how it started, and also your uh, athletic background. My girlfriend is a professional bodybuilder. Um, cool. And so I've, over the past couple of years, since getting to know her and her kicking my royal ass in the gym, uh, have become more aware and more respected of the sport and the just the lifestyle of bodybuilding. So it's kind of a two-prong with you because you're an incredible uh, personality and talent and wit on TikTok, but also you, you, you apply yourself in the world of bodybuilding. So appreciate it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if that's okay with Nobody you. knew, nobody knew that I worked out when I started TikTok. Like I just do all my videos, like right, yeah, <laughs> right yeah. here up in the grill. I got chunky cheeks. So everybody's just thought I was fat and I finally just got tired of being made fun of, fun of for being fat. So I flexed on everybody for a couple of days. <laughs> I saw and that. I was shocked the whole thing. I saw that, and some so, of the reactions there were, were just priceless. The one guy is just sitting there. You just broke his mind, and he's sitting there <laughs> going, like, you look like, you look like someone took a fat, kid's, a fat kid's head and stuck it on a middle school teacher or something like that. It just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> some of those, like, the funny roasts were just really, really cool. Yeah. But as far as getting started on TikTok, I used to do, like, the type of videos that I do, like, skits-wise and stuff, I used to actually put them on my Instagram stories. And I did that for a long time. I used to try and be a Fitstagrammer. So I spent like two whole years trying to do that. Never broke a thousand followers on Instagram. But I just, my, I always did funny stories and stuff. And my friends had been trying to get me, like a couple of my friends and even my sister and my cousin had been trying to get me to start a TikTok for a long time. And one day I posted essentially what ended up being my very first TikTok. I posted it on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I had like three people like, just do it. Just go ahead and make one. I was like, fine. So I made a TikTok. And I was in like February or something like that. And then, you know, here we are. <laughs> I like retakes. Yeah. I seem witty, but I'm not. I'm sitting here with like a notepad. And I'm like, no, no, no. Let's call him. Let's call him Shamrock Shake. Let's, <laughs> let's call him a weird name. What do, you, what, do you, what do you mean you seem witty, though? I'm mean, crying out loud. Some of the stuff that you actually produce on TikTok, where you're talking back to yourself and even acknowledge the fact, like, of course, this is a TikTok video, and you continue on with the joke. I mean, that's brilliant. I appreciate it. I, I, I just try to put stuff out there that I think is funny, but my funny stuff doesn't do that good. It's all my political stuff that I hate making that everybody just laps up. And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I don't mind making it, but I like fart jokes, man. <laughs> 
Well, Let those go viral. <laughs> you you didn't you didn't start off with this whole political uh, stance either. I mean, you, you said so mm-hmm. yourself. You started off. You were you initially were on Instagram as like a fit, fitstagram, as you said it, uh, yeah. trying to be fitness. But then, I mean, you were doing just funny things. Did you feel inclined to get more political? So really, I didn't. I would have even considered it political. I mean, I guess the landscape and everything kind of would have. But it was when Black Lives Matter first started, like really ramping back up. Um, it wasn't that I felt like I needed to. I wanted to kind of like show my support, but I started seeing a lot of stuff from the other side, really like derogatory towards them. And I just started like I don't know defending them, and it just you know. Mo- I even said to most people like most of my political stuff are responses to comments within my videos. Like, I don't just go out and make a ton of political content. I make one video and I reply to 50 comments mm. that are about it. I'm like, if you guys would just stop being assholes, I wouldn't have any of these videos that you hate so much. But so but you take the time to do the research, though. I mean, when you come back with a retort or a snapback or, or any sort of burn, I mean, you have your wit within the video, but you come informed and like barrels full of information. You don't just come and just be insulting. Yeah, that's kind of the goal. Like, I I like the balance of, like, I'm going to make you feel bad about yourself, but I'm also going to educate you a little. <laughs> so, and it's it's because I've been in that, like, indoctrinated mindset before where every single thing on the other side was wrong, no matter what anybody ever said, fake news and all that. I tell people, I was a conservative last year. You know what I mean? Like, I grew up in Alabama. I grew up conservative. Mm. And it took a lot of, like, self-reflection and research for me to finally kind of dig myself out of that hole one day. And I still try. Like, I mean, there's times where I'm like, I don't know if I'm 100%. Like, should I be upset about what this person said? And I'll look into it. But then sometimes I'm just like, nah, fam. (laughs) Let me go ahead and make a video. I already know the answer to these questions. Well, nothing in this world is black and white. I mean, there are right. gray areas, and there's lots of information out there. And you know, you've taken it upon yourself many times, and delightful videos to, when you do it to try to debunk a lot of things that are out there. And sometimes, I mean, you'll you'll see a video or you'll be tagged in a video, and it's just a giant ass softball just lobbed in your direction, and all you have to do is swing. Yep. For sure. I, so that happened a few nights ago, maybe a week ago. Uh, I actually kind of feel bad about this one. This lady <laughs> hmm. stitched one of my videos where I was like, you can't claim to be the party of grownups if you're also going to declare a civil war because you lost an election. And this lady stitched my video. And she was like, no, you it's your fault. Like, oh, you started it. You're an idiot. The police are on our side. And I did a response like in bed, like I just saw it and I was like, this was the weakest argument anyone's ever sent my way. I was like, but I'm not going to let it slide. And I roasted her bad enough. She deleted her entire account. Oh, shit. And I, I honest to God, feel bad about that. I'm like, that's not what I want. Like, that's <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I want you to I learn like something, not hide. <laughs> yeah. Like I like roasting people and stuff, but I don't want people to like have to hide from me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't go out looking for these people. I very seldomly will, like, take a video from somebody else, unless they're a really big creator. I very seldomly do that, three or four times. Hmm. Most of my video responses are to people who instigated it with me. So You you, you don't go out there looking for a fight. Mm -mm. Yeah. Not on purpose. (laughs) (laughs) As it stands right now, it is uh, November the 19th, 2020. You are currently sitting at... 199,000 and change followers. That, Jeez. first of all, congratulations. That is Thanks. incredible. Second of all, like, what was the first milestone on TikTok that, did I say you had that many Instagram followers? I only had, I only have 8,000 yet. Okay, yeah. But what was the first milestone on TikTok when it comes to followers and maybe a viral video that you did? What was the first one that just kind of tucked? like caught your attention went i might be on to something here well the first one that i was ever like okay <laughs> like i i might be able to get it was probably seventy five thousand because i've had a pretty slow burn you know what i mean like i've i've posted virtually every single day multiple times a day since february and i don't like go out of my way to do it i most of the time i just either if i have a skit all my stuff's recorded in time hmm. Like, I'm like, I just had this idea. Let me go ahead and do it. With the exception of some of the ones like Black Lives Matter where I needed statistics. But most of my stuff's just right there in the moment. Um, so I just kind of do it. But when I hit 75,000, I did a 
a side note, I did a prank on my local news station because I hit 75,000. We have something called the Pe National Peanut Festival every year. And I had all my followers go to the Facebook page where they talked about it and just say, peanuts are my least favorite legume. <laughs> like all we said. And there were thousands of these comments. And every old person in Dothan, Alabama that can work at Facebook was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, oh, right now. like, they were like, don't go then. I was like, oh my God, Gerald, what the hell? So, but that was the first time I was like, I have a little bit of a following right now. Like I can, I can do weird things like this and people listen to me. But that's that's but, that's 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 pretty much harmless. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, up until then, I mean, I genuinely, when I first started, I thought maybe I'll get a thousand followers, and then I hit a thousand. I was like, maybe I'll get five thousand. Like, I, I got five thousand. I didn't tell my friends until I got five thousand. I didn't tell <laughs> anybody for the most part that I knew because I was like, they're gonna roast my ass so hard, <laughs> and they did. My friend Zach, who he's one of my best friends, he he's like, I heard you had a TikTok. It was a while. Before I finally talked to him, I was like, yeah. He's like, how many followers you got? And I was like, 100,000. And he was like, oh, shit. <laughs> He's like, I was about to make fun of you, damn. <laughs> I can't make fun of you now. You just blown me out of the water. Yeah, he's like, well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much for that idea. <laughs> Attempted to go f f uh, fins fins Instagram, Instagram, yeah. yeah. And that didn't take off. But then you said that uh, when you were on TikTok, you, you didn't... It, you didn't boast about it, but you also didn't go out of your way to show it. It was only just recently you did this video, and I just I was blown away when I saw it because you said something. It's like, dude, bro, I left, and you just flexed, mm -hmm. and you got the big old gun there. Like, Jesus Christ, where are you hiding that shit? Yeah, I hide it under my cheeks. I yeah. store all my muscles in here for winter, and nobody can see them. I didn't want to be that person because, first off, I am a bigger guy. I'm like 215 pounds. So I'm, oh, I'm oh, I hold, hold, hold the fuck on here. You're a bigger guy. How, how tall are you? I'm five, eight. See, that doesn't help my case. I'm, <laughs> I'm five, nine struggling with 235 pounds. Okay. I, so, I don't, I don't I think a, I look I anything like you. Guy. Sorry. Was it? <laughs> I was a large guy once. I okay. got up to like 260 plus pounds of like, no muscle, zero muscle at all. And I had to, I spent like two years losing weight mm. um, and I got down to like 185 and then I built back up and now I like, I try to competitively power lift, but I think I have a herniated disc in my back. So it might be a little while before I do that again. Right. But like I tell my, I tell people like when they ask me, I'm just like, I'm, I'm a, I'm a broad bitch. <laughs> like that's, I'm wide. <laughs> that's just how it is. And I just record all my videos up close and you, I mean, you know, you have like the camera warping and stuff like that. Right. You know, I just didn't want to like try and look like I was bragging about working out because you're going to get those comments like, oh, he's just trying to show off. He's just trying to do this. And I was like, no, I want to be known as the funny guy. We'll, we'll cross the muscle bridge later. Yeah. <laughs> I just I have that in the background. Just get to yeah, know me for just me in case. first. Yes. The um, guy that I made that response to, heads, he's a, that dude's a piece of crap, like a full on turd sandwich. Okay. But he has, he's got a mask on, like he hides his identity. He's on like his 15th account and all he does is troll bigger creators and he'll comment on our posts. He'll stitch our videos. And every time he's done one of mine, I've never acknowledged him before. He's called me fat or mentioned my weight. He said like, you need to lay off the little Debbie's like all sorts of stuff like that. And then finally one day I was just like, fuck this dude. I'm tired of it. And I was at the gym when I saw his message, and I was right. like, oh, I got something for you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you this, he never responded again. No kidding. No kidding. Congratulations. So. Good on you for that one. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Finally shut his ass up a little bit. <laughs> the, one, the one moment you were waiting for is like, I have this in the yeah. barrel. I'm just I can waiting. I quit TikTok now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all done. done. <laughs> So you, you you used to be a heavy set person, uh, mm -hmm. definitely not in the shape that you're in now. What inspired you to start on this health path? I can tell you exactly what happened. I went to Gap to buy some pants, and I put on some 40s and couldn't touch the buttons together. And I said, no, I'm going to <laughs> run in the day. I still remember that. I was in like 2015, I think. Okay. So yeah, that was a sad, sad day. <laughs> <laughs> when you can't find a fit at Gap. Yeah, it's time like, to take a look in the mirror. Good long. Well, I was still life. under the assumption that I wore like thirty sixes, and then I couldn't even get the buttons on some forties to touch. I was like, "No, ma'am, right. <laughs> no, right. this is a lie." Yeah. 
So well, what uh, what did that journey entail? Like, did you see a personal trainer? Did you go through some sort of diet plan? So I, at the time, and for almost about five years after that, I was actually managing GNCs. So that's what I used to do for a living up right. until this past mm, February. No. When did I get fired? Something like that. February. Um, fired. I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, they let me go. GNC yeah. like went under as a company for the most part, and they did a bunch of shady stuff, just letting people go left and right. Yeah. Um, but I was work. I worked there. I mean, when you're around that type of stuff, you have access. You have you're around people that do that all day, and it's like in the air. You just want to go to the gym when you leave work, you know. Right. So I did, and I worked out really hard for a long time. There was about a six months spree there where I went to the gym like six days a week. So. I did it all. I did a lot of stuff the wrong way. Like there was a long time there at the beginning of my weight loss journey where I, I just barely ate anything and I did like an hour of cardio a day, but oh. yeah. So, I mean, I was a bean pole and I've had, I've had posts on my Instagram where I've talked about body composition and how like, here's a picture of me at, you know, 200 pounds. Here's another picture of me at 200 pounds. And I look like two completely different people. Mm. And I'm like, it's just about body. Comp- I did another bit cardio here and I did another lift weights heavy here. So, right. And once you learn how to do it right, things change. I can I can actually directly relate to the struggles of doing shit wrong at the very yeah. beginning. Um, I too, at one point in time, was much much heavier, and um, I, I had a um, I wouldn't say a midlife crisis because I don't want to say that at that age I was in the middle of my life because Jesus yeah. Christ, I don't have much time left. Um, but, uh, I decided a quarter life crisis. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll take that a quarter life crisis, yeah. maybe even a third, but there you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I decided, you know, I'm going to, I, I don't know what I want to do, but I do know what I don't want. And what I don't want is to feel like this anymore. So I, right. I made it, I took it upon myself to hit the gym or at least get some exercise every day for a hundred days. And that didn't mean like go to gym and hit it hard. I, I learned yeah. that lesson real quick because it was like the third or fourth day. I remember trying to crawl out of bed. I couldn't move my arms and I had to get my ex-wife to come over just to put my shirt on. It was a mess. It was an utter mess. Mm-hmm. But uh, I went to the local protein store, supplement store, and I mm-hmm. bought this this powder. And it was recommended that I go with this brand. And so I was like, okay, pfft, grab it off the shelf and whatever. About a week into using this stuff, I'd find it. I'd just get utterly gassed when I get to the gym and I get halfway through and I have zero energy whatsoever. So I talked to one of my friends who's, you know, a little bit more athletic than me at the time and was a personal trainer. And I said, I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. Like I'm, I'm eating healthy. I'm, I'm eating protein, what I think is protein. So that's like chicken and fish and steak. And I got this and he goes, hold, hold, hold on, hold on. What do you got? He goes, I said, I have this. And he shows, I show it to him and he, he looks at it and goes, vitamin water. This should have been protein powder. <laughs> <laughs> Like, well, this explains a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, like, I, I've, I've made mistakes, I, and I know the struggles of, like, you know what? I, I fucking learned from that one there. So You got to be careful going into these supplement shops, man. Some, Yeah, some of them, they're there to make a buck, and the other ones, they actually are there to help you out. Yep. So you, you tried out competitive lifting? Mm-hmm. Yeah, competitive powerlifting. One of my buddies, I always did like the bodybuilding style of everything, um, especially when I first started trying to lose weight. And one of my buddies had been in the strongman competitions and stuff, and he just kept telling me, like, dude, you're built for powerlifting. Just be a powerlifter already. And finally convinced me to at least try. I competed in my first meet. Um, I, I won my weight division in it. Um, it was a full power. Um, I think my squat was like 455. My deadlift was like 535. And my bench was like 330. Jesus. My bench has gone virtually nowhere since then. The most I've hit ever is 365. And that was like three years ago when I did 330. So, But it was cool. And I've done a couple of – I did a random push pull, which is just bench and deadlift one day. Like I wasn't even going to compete. And I just woke up and I was like, fudge it. Let's go <laughs> do this. And I ended up winning that one too. I've got like a bunch of cool videos from that. So that was fun. So I've done a few. Um, I lost the most recent one that I did. I came in second. Um, I bitched out. I got <laughs> I got all up in my head on my last lift, and I failed the lift and lost because of it. So I have to redeem myself eventually. 
it is very much a mental game of of mm -hmm. of doing this thing. You have to be in the right state of mind. You have to have that confidence within you, and you have to have the like the almost the inner strength as much as the actual physical strength to yeah. accomplish some of these feats. Yeah, there's a lot of times where I don't have that mental fortitude right now because of I'm doing school, I'm working so many hours, like my brain is just gone. So, and I'm at the gym just like wanting to take a nap and like my body has the strength to do it, but my brain can't make it happen. Yeah. And that's, that's the struggle that I'm working through right now. Yeah. Also, I mean, we, we all have the situation. I don't know what it's like in Alabama, but I know in, Brit in British Columbia, we are not a lockdown, but we just had, um, the government come out and say, uh, we have to do, uh, mandatory masks everywhere unless yep. you're at home uh even if you're going to the gym um there's no like no yoga class no spin class no nothing like that classes at all uh everywhere has to be a mask and it has to be it's a mandated mandated mask requirement for like the next three weeks because things are starting to not spiral out of control but they aren't going down when it comes to cases of covid yeah so in alabama our uh, Mima Ivy is what we call our governor. Mm -hmm. um, she has instituted virtually nothing. We have a mask mandate that nobody adheres to. Um, I'm lucky to go to a, a private gym. So, I mean, there's at the busiest, there's eight people in that gym whenever I go. And I'm typically in a room off by myself. Um, so that's good. Um, but, I mean, anywhere you go in Alabama, unless you're in Birmingham or something, there's Nobody's wearing a mask. I go to the I go to this gas station down the road from my house like every morning to get an energy drink because I'm addicted to caffeine, <laughs> and I'm the only person there ever wearing a mask. I'm like, I wonder who you guys voted for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Geez, they make that abundantly <laughs> clear, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, and the thing is too, like they there's. Oh my God, man! I'm about to go on a tirade. There's <laughs> they have this plexiglass right in front of the cashiers now too. Yeah. And there is spittle all over it. Like, you can see it. And I'm, I'm just like, this is why we wear masks. <laughs> like, if this wasn't here, you guys would have loogies all over your face all day. And you wouldn't even know. Yeah. Like, it's your evidence. This is COVID right here. Yeah. <laughs> come here. Come here. Just still like, Lick this. <laughs> These masks don't do nothing. I, I don't, I don't want to get into too much political stuff because you're American. <laughs> I'm Canadian. Um, we have our own little political issues in the government right now but i do yeah. want to know um with the coming change that's coming in about it's the 19th so just over two months how much further do you think you're going to go with this uh, uh policies and politicalness and also going back and fact checking people like is this going to continue to be a focus of yours or are you going to try to steer somewhere else um, I'll say this, I don't intend to in, like intentionally do anything. Right. It's just kind of, like I said, like most of my stuff, just whatever I'm thinking about. So if, you know, COVID stays really relevant, if, you know, the world of politics is still on fire, if it's something that I'm seeing, I can't help but make content about it. I don't intentionally really go out and make content about anything. Right. I do want to have a little bit more of a focus on my funny stuff. Just because, I mean, like, my, my teachers, you know, like, they know, they found me on TikTok. So, like, my teachers know about my page. So I don't want to, like, continue. Because there are times where, like, I'll go and I'll watch, like, three, of my, three or four of my videos in a row. And I'm like, none of these were positive. Mm. These, like, these are me roasting somebody. And, yeah, they may be kind of funny and stuff like that. But they're not, like, positive videos. Right. So, and I want to have something that's always positive, too. I want to have a, a better balance than I have been. So that's really the only intentional thing that I'm trying to do is just maybe strike a better balance. Mm. The issue with nowadays, and it's not just in America, but it's, it's, it's like, I know it's like that, it's like this in Canada too, is when you're in the social media, um, not so much when it comes to Instagram, but TikTok, uh, when you're in the For You page, or even just Twitter in general, it's it's doom scrolling. You're just going through like, oh, fuck, there's that story. Oh, fuck, there's this story. Oh, God damn. Yeah. Right? So that positivity is something that, you know, as, as you point out, um, is, is sometimes something that you have to create yourself just to right. get out of a funk. Yeah, that's one of the reasons that even in the roasty videos that I do, I try and keep them as lighthearted as I can. Mm. Some of them 
can't warrant it. I almost made a video right before I got on with you and I decided not to just because I was like, I tore into this guy just a little too hard. Some guy made a comment in one of my videos about how essentially old people are just going to die anyway. So why bother? And I, yeah, man, I, so I are you in. asshole. <laughs> yeah. Like I still have the video saved in my drafts. Like I'm still debating it a little bit, but mm. I cut pretty deep into that one. That so. is, that is bloody cruel. I haven't had a grandparent in about 15 years. I would give anything to have them back. And if they were back right now, if they were still alive now, especially during this world, like I would miss them dearly. But I, if there was any sort of risk or anything at all that I could get them sick or they could get sick by me visiting, I, I would, I would be doing this. I'd yeah. be like, I'd, t I'd, I'd buy him a laptop and like grandma set this up and we would chat <laughs> through this. Like, that's just... My mama is way too hard headed for that. She has got she's like eighty three and in like fantastic shape for an eighty three year old. Yeah, but I'm like COVID don't care, mama. <laughs> like stay home for a little bit, dang. Yeah, yeah. She won't. She's got a little boyfriend, and they gotta like go all over town together. Yeah, mate. Like can you not? Can you not kill each other, please? <laughs> Let's get into something a little bit more lighthearted. Um, what sure. is what is something that comes to mind that uh, your followers or fans uh, either caught you by surprise, did something fantastic like the peanut thing? So I'm at my gym next month. We're doing a, a charity push pull, and it's like a toy drive. Mm. So I put out there for people if they want to, they can donate toys through my PO box, and I even have an Amazon wish list set up for the drive. Mm. And it just comes straight to my house. And in my living room right now, my couch is just covered with toys already. Wow. And I, I released a video about that like maybe a week ago. And I'm, we're, I've am we got like a couple hundred dollars with the toys in there already. So that's awesome. I'm going to do a few more videos about that too and see if we can't snag a few more. But I mean, that it's insane. Especially, I'll go ahead and give a shout out, Elizabeth Garst. I've gotten just package after package after package and it's got a little from elizabeth garst elizabeth garst elizabeth garst and i keep wanting to make a video about it but i don't like i type in that name and it doesn't like show up on there so her screen name is something else if you're watching this elizabeth holy crap thank you for everything also you've sent me drinks and stuff and i love it <laughs> there you go hopefully she sees this we're gonna i hope to, so <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do something to make sure that she sees this then Absolutely. You're in school now. You're you're gainfully employed, uh, and you are still working away, having a good time with either clapbacks or just fact checks or just funny stuff. That I love the skits, quite frankly. When yeah. you go off and you start talking to yourself, it's just I love it. Um, I appreciate it. What do you hope to achieve within the next little while on social media with your schooling and career wise? Well, currently my job, I'm just at Best Buy, and I'm just going to be there until I graduate. I'm in school to be a physical therapist assistant. I'm just about to finish my first semester with that, so I have like another four semesters. Mm. And I mean, the second I graduate, I'm moving to Birmingham um, to go be up there. I've got a little bit of family up there. So that's, that's the goal with that. As far as social media goes, after I graduate, I have a YouTube channel. I barely ever post to it because I just don't have the time, really. But I mean, I'll probably pick that back up after I graduate. And I want to keep doing TikTok. I mean, if it stays around and if, you know, my following keeps growing the way that it is, I mean, that'd be, that'd be pretty cool. Cool. Is there anything else? Not off the top of my head. Honestly, this was super cool, though. <laughs> like, I didn't know what to expect going into this, man. But this was super fun. Well, I appreciate it. It's, it's actually like an absolute pleasure to uh, have the chance to talk to you as well because – uh, like seeing the stuff that you do on TikTok uh, now that you, now I know you have a YouTube I'm gonna be following you there the stuff that you do and your creativity and your sense of humor as well as just your your delightful wittiness is is definitely like as, as soon as you showed up on my for you page I was like I'm following this motherfucker right now because <laughs> <laughs> it's just I appreciate it man I wish everybody had the same like first reaction <laughs> I have people that'll be like I've been seeing your videos for months on my FYP, but I'm finally going to follow you. I'm like, you dick. <laughs> like, Why'd you wait? <laughs> yeah, why'd it take so long? <laughs>